to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Dr. Meter Power Supply model HY1803D. Um, and I initially didn't really plan on making an overview of this little power supply, uh, but after going online and trying to do some research and finding no videos on this thing, I thought, hey, what the heck, I have it right here, I might as well do something with it and help some other people out. Um, I'm not going to be able to like reverse engineer it or anything because I'm just not that advanced yet. Uh, so what we're going to do today is take a look around the power supply, uh, take a look at what came in the box and how it was packaged. I was actually really surprised because it was packaged pretty well. Of course, I'm going to take this thing apart and show you guys everything inside. I'll say a couple things about it, but once again, can't reverse engineer the thing. If you guys want to, I'll try to get some really good footage so you can uh, take an in-depth look at this. I'm going to pull out my multimeter, test out how accurate both these displays are, uh, and of course, I'm going to talk about some of the features on this little power supply. So let's go ahead and get started. Basically what this is, is just a cheap generic Chinese power supply manufactured under a couple different names. This is also manufactured under the brand of Tech Power and Mass Tech. Now, does that mean the power supply is horrible? No, it just means they're using really cheap parts and cheap labor to go along with it to keep the cost down on this thing. I picked this up at Amazon for $40, which is perfect for my college student budget. Before I go any further, let me go ahead and talk about the packaging because I was actually really surprised when I opened it up because there were some complaints on Amazon about poor packaging um, and I did not experience that. The packaging uh, with this product was actually great. Now you see these two foam inserts were wrapped around the package um, and then there's this plastic wrapping uh, that also went around the power supply. So these two foam inserts were surrounding the thing uh, with plastic around it and then it was inside this nice sturdy box. So when I opened it I was actually really surprised uh, sustained no damage on the way here. Uh, it does have that uh, nice Chinese factory smell which I still haven't gotten rid of. But besides that, I had absolutely no issues with the packaging and shipping. Right now you're looking at everything that came out of that box I just showed you. And I was actually pleasantly surprised to find that it did come with a set of alligator leads. I don't think it said that in the description. So when I opened the box, I was like, whoa, awesome. And they actually don't feel too bad. So uh, pleasant surprise there. I have heard some complaints about this power cable, uh, especially all over Amazon's uh, review page. People were saying that it shorts out when you plug it into the back of the power supply. I have not had any issues with this yet, so I cannot confirm nor deny if that's true or not. Uh, but the one that I received is just fine. Of course, you can see the manual here. Um, written in some pretty sketchy English. I mean, it's readable, but you can tell it was translated. Um, and I think I'll scan this and post this at the end of the video if anyone really wants to take a closer look at it because I'm trying to get it up on camera now and it's not coming out too well. Um, so, I mean, there's nothing really too interesting in here. And of course, we have our power supply right here. Before I take this thing apart, let's go ahead and take a look around the outside. You can see the two LCD displays on the front. This one is to display the voltage. This one displays the current. Each of them is backlit by one LED on the right side of the display. Um, you can see our two potentiometers here. They're actually pretty smooth and don't feel too bad at all. The top knob limits the current and the bottom one is for your voltage adjustment. And yes, this thing is capable of limiting the current if you set it to do so. You can see our nice clunky power switch on the bottom and this does light up when you uh, turn it on and plug it in. You can see the two posts, the negative post and the positive terminal right there. I can go ahead and um, they actually pop off. And uh, the threads don't feel too cheap so I don't think they will strip anytime soon. Let me go ahead and uh, Get you a closer look at that. There you go. I'm just going to screw that back on real quick. And as far as rebranding this goes, it's actually pretty easy because the only place you can see a brand name is on this little sticker right here. So if you want to change the brand to uh, Tech Power or Mastic, you just tear this sticker off and put your sticker on. Uh, so that's not very hard at all. Taking a look at the right side of the power supply, you can see the four screws that we have to remove on this side and there's also four screws on this side that we will need to remove to uh, take this panel off and take a look inside. Going to do that in just a minute as I said earlier in the video. You can see the vents on the uh, both the sides actually and there's also vents on the top or there vents on the bottom. I do not recall. Let's go ahead and take a look. No, there are not but you can see four rubber feet on the bottom and then on the back of the power supply. Let me go ahead and uh, turn it over. You can see the heat sink with a transistor mounted to it. This is a, uh, let me see if I can uh, get this in focus. 
this is just your run-of-the-mill um, 2N3055 uh, transistor uh, mounted to the back of this heat sink. You can see a thermal pad right here for isolation and heat transfer. Um, and once again, this is just one of those cheap off the uh, shelf parts. I mean, I've seen these all the time on uh, older audio equipment. I think this is rated up to um, 115 watts, 60 volts. I'll put an annotation in if that's wrong, but I think that's uh, what this thing is rated for. You can see the uh, power jack right there and then some uh, little caution labels right here. Um, and of course, this will only run off the 110 volt mains. There's no switch to uh, switch between 220 and 110. And there is one thing I did just notice when I first received this. I thought it was in pretty much near perfect cosmetic condition, but I just saw this on the back of the case and you can see that there is actually a slight bend on the uh, top of the case right here. I mean, it's really not a big deal, um, but that is one of those, you know, small quality control issues. The power supply is now plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. As I said earlier in the video, you can see that both of the LCDs are lit by one LED light on the right side. The power button also lights up, and if I crank up the voltage, you can hear the uh, relay inside the power supply. Did you hear that? I'll try it one more time as we go back down. There we go. I hope my mic picks that up because it's a nice clunky relay. It sounds really good. Okay, so at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and throw a small load on this, probably just a tiny little electric motor, um, and run it through a couple tests. Ah, well I just started editing this video together and I realized that this clip somehow magically disappeared off my camera so we're gonna shoot it all over again right now. What we're gonna do right now is test out a cheap Chinese power supply with a cheap Chinese multimeter. This is the XLDT9205A multimeter that I got off Amazon a year ago for $10. Um, you know, it's not a fluke but it gets the job done. Once again, college student can't afford e e extremely expensive testing equipment that's just not in my budget. So what we're gonna do right now is test out how accurate the multimeter, or not the multimeter, uh, but the voltage meter is on this power supply versus my little multimeter right here. So I'm just gonna crank it up, voltage is down here, and then uh, in the next clip we'll test out how accurate the current readings are as well. Just gonna crank it up in five volt increments. Leave it at 5 volts, so it's reading uh, 5 volts right here, and it's reading uh, 5.07 volts here. So uh, once again, we're missing uh, one figure right there, so pretty accurate at that point. Let's crank it up to 10. Or I guess not once again, I didn't even mention that before, but yeah, we have one more figure on the uh, multimeter than we do on the power supply. You heard the relay kick in there. I'm going to try to get it just at 10. And you can see that we are uh, sitting at 9.98 and of course this is just rounding that up to 10 volts so uh, pretty accurate as of now. Let's go up one more step and I'll crank it to the max which I think this stops at 18.3 um, at, uh, volts and I'm not sure if I mentioned this before but the max rating of this power supply is uh, 18 volts at uh, 15 no 3 amps sorry <laughs> 18 volts at 3 amps uh, 15 14.94 that's fine Let's crank it up all the way to 18.3 and you can see that there is a slight deviation when we get all the way up to the top um, but that's nothing super significant so not too bad on the readings on this power supply. I have this small little 380 size motor hooked up to the power supply right now and I want to go ahead and test out how accurate the current meter is on this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this up to 5 volts and I'm also going to demonstrate the uh, current limiting feature as well. So pop that up to five volts. Uh, just gonna connect it to the motor. And it got a little bit noisy, uh, but we are currently using about 560 milliamps of current. And it is also measuring about that on the multimeter. So not bad, let's go ahead and crank up the voltage to seven. I'm not gonna go above 10 with this uh, motor because it starts to get pretty hot at 10 volts using about 620 milliamps and the meter is reading 610 milliamps so once again still pretty close and we're going to crank it up to 10 but not past 10 and here I'm also going to demonstrate the current limiting feature and you can hear that uh, relay just kicked in again 
Here we go, we're using about 750 milliamps of current right now. Um, according to the multimeter, we are only using 720 milliamps, so uh, starting to get a little bit off right now. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and kick in that uh, current limiting feature. There we go. I should have done this from the start. Would have made things a lot easier, but I'm going to go... Ah, knock the camera. But I'm going to go ahead and hook the motor up again and bump the current all the way up so I can limit it on camera. So we're still running it at 10 volts. And I'm going to turn the current down just a tad. Turn it down to 600 milliamps, and you can see that's also... Uh, varying the voltage along with that. Oh, uh, let's bump that up a little bit so the motor uh, stays on. So where's the uh, threshold for this for this old motor? Probably about 400 milliamps um, before the motor cuts out. But yeah, that's the current limiting function right here. And current limiting is a really handy feature to have on a power supply this cheap. And it really does come in handy when you're prototyping. And uh, let's just say for some reason there's a short in your prototype. Um, you can set the current limit to 1 amp. And when you plug it in, it, this won't allow your circuit to draw more than 1 amp. Hopefully saving it from utter destruction. Now let's go ahead and get to the part that you all have been waiting for. Let's take this thing apart and see what's inside. And that was actually pretty easy to get apart, thank goodness. It probably only took three to four minutes in real time. There are only eight screws you need to remove, and the only issue I had was that uh, when the heads on these screws actually immediately disintegrated when I put my screwdriver into it. So this is going in the trash and not back onto the power supply, because if I put it back onto the power supply, I'm not going to be able to get it apart again in the future. And you can see that this is actually kind of warped. Um, it seems like it did take them a little bit of force to uh, mount it on this chassis right here. Um, but you can see that I have the power supply. Whoa, that's wobbly. You should probably be careful with that um, <laughs> without this holding it together. But I have it apart now, and you can actually see that it doesn't look uh, too sketchy. I was actually pretty surprised when I opened this up. Start from the top and work our way down. So on the back of the board, you can see our bridge rectification going on right here. There's a nice big beefy filter capacitor right here. This is actually a Nippon Chemicon capacitor, which was uh, quite a surprise. I didn't expect to see that in something this cheap. Uh, moving over to the right side, you can see some more capacitors over here, and these actually aren't mounted as well as this capacitor was. These are kind of just thrown on the board, and you can see that they're kind of, you know, just freely. Uh, uh, waving around there. I wish they would have, you know, put some kind of putty or maybe hot glue under that to hold it in place. But I mean, that's not a super big deal. Um, right here, you can see a Texas Instruments operational amplifier. Um, there is a voltage regulator right. Ah, voltage regulator right here. This is a. Um, um, God, what is this? I think this is an L seven eight one two CV voltage regulator. Let me see if I can uh, get that in focus. Nah, that's not coming out on camera. I give up. <laughs> but just take my word for it. That's what it is. Moving up, you can see some more capacitors up here, um, resistors, and there's really nothing else um, super interesting up here. Over here, you can see the board for the front panel. Moving down, there is the um, transformer right here. I'm also I also forgot to mention that I believe this is that big switching relay right here. And then. Uh, interesting it's interesting to see that everything's really modular on here i mean it's not soldered it's not actually soldered to the boards which you think would have been cheaper to do they actually have connectors for everything which is uh, pretty neat i mean so far i'm actually really impressed with the uh, quality of this power supply given how cheap it is uh, moving over to the back you can see where the power is coming in, you can see that is the uh, ground is attached to the back of the case right here, um, where this little screw is on the heatsink. Now I didn't notice this before, but there's actually some sort of uh, adjustment pots right here. I'm not sure what those uh, should be used for. But looking at the bottom of the board, you can see the uh, soldering job on this isn't too shabby. It's not that bad, uh, especially for, uh, I think this is probably... I don't know, I can't tell if it's done by hand or if it's uh, done by machine. I mean, it's um, it's kind of in the middle as far as quality goes.
But yeah, right after this clip, I'm going to throw up some HD images so you guys can get a better look at everything, especially the stuff that I didn't really touch on because there's still a lot of stuff in here that I haven't uh, uh, really said anything about yet. So HD images usually get the point across better, and I'm not really sure how well everything's coming out on video, so definitely going to throw up some HD pictures right after this clip for you guys. I'm just gonna rotate around here. I mean, you can go ahead and skip through this if you want. This is just to give you guys a better view of everything on the board. All right, let me go ahead and pop out those pictures. Surprisingly, that actually wasn't too hard to get back together. I thought since the panel was all warped, it'd be hard to get the screw holes to align properly, but it only took maybe three minutes to throw the uh, the panel assembly back on, so not too big of a deal there. Um, overall, I feel like this is a pretty well-built power supply for 40 bucks. Uh, there were some issues on the top board with some of the components just kind of floating around there, but that's something you would expect to see on the power supply this cheap. Um, and I do have one issue with this. I've been testing this out for the past two weeks uh, and I have to say at close to full load I was running it at uh, 2.5 amps at 18 volts. It got pretty darn hot so I had to take a fan and uh, have some uh, cool air blow over it just to keep it cool because I was afraid you know I, I didn't know what would happen if uh, I let it sit there and run at close to full load. So that's just a little advisory. I wouldn't let this run at full load overnight. Uh, it's gonna get pretty hot. Uh, and really, I think that's going to be about it for all I have to say. If you guys saw something wrong in this video, once again, I am a learning electronics student, so if you have something to say or some correction to make, please post it in the comment section. I appreciate your help, and I really would like learning about this stuff, so if you have something to say, go ahead and say it. It's not going to you know, hurt my feelings. I don't care. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got some useful information out of it. Um, and I hope those uh, HD images were really helpful. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, please do not forget to like this video. I will see you guys in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.